the awesome. This is one of the most awesome mechs in the game. 1600-ish battle value of, and 80 tons of pure, almost unstoppable devastation. So let's go start taking a look at the awesome. It's one of the, um, it shows up in the original TRO under the assault class. So we'll have to flip a little bit to it. Let's see in the meanwhile, all these other original mechs here. Okay, we're getting close. Yeah. Little bust gone a little too far. Charger, where is it? Must be before the charger. Oh yeah. The AWS 8Q. And you can see the original specs. Now, one of the oldest mechs, but is not borrowed from another anime series so that's why you can still get it it is not unseen even though you will find blue card um, old versions of it but you can still get new versions that look very similar so the reason it's very unkillable is because it has no ammo and that makes it resistant to ammunition bin hits as well as no fear of overheating effects of blowing up ammo. Now in 3050, when the clans were invented, the um, Awesome did get a slight upgrade as well. Um, along with many of the Inner Sphere mechs, they, many of them got Helm Memory Core upgrades. Uh, Helm Memory Core was discovered by the Grey Death Legion, and it was basically a database of uh, Star League tech designs and engineering that had become lost tech. So things like endo steel, ferrofibrous armor, and many ER type weapons were um, recovered. So the uh, updates just before the clan invasion usually involve these lost tech upgrades. Here it is, the very first one. And this is the 9M variant. And its main improvements are the XL engine and ER PPCs. And also because of the additional space and weight available, or well, the weight available, it got a bunch of SRMs and a medium pulse laser added on uh, as bonus weapons that previous ones couldn't carry. Now there's a lot of awesome and variants of awesome that you can pick from, but I'm going to focus on just four variants, which are basic variants. And also I'm going to show you how to calculate the cost when you customize it. First up, this is the vanilla awesome, the AWS 8Q. It's the standard one with three PPCs and a small laser. And Sarna lists its C bill cost as 6.59 million. And that's all fine as long as you're using the standard variant. But Sarna doesn't seem to list the C bill costs of some of the other variants. Um, and you'll notice that this one also has 28 heat sinks. Um, it's a 350 move. Um, and it's got 15 tons of armor a 240 engine and you can see its various other spe specs um, one of the annoying features of heat sinks is that the number of sinks that are needed for crit is not the same as the number of sinks that are needed for weight purposes so you have to remember that those two can be different um, also here's the standard setup so what do you do if you want to use try out the 8r but you don't know its c bills cost well Calculating the C bills is pretty tricky, um, but what you can do is called a differential calculation. That is, take the 
8Q and see what the 8R should cost based on the changes. If you look carefully, you see this range damage profile and under that weapon class range use profiles, that code isn't quite ready yet, so ignore that. But in the future, I'm going to track what weapons were used at what ranges for each variant in the various simulations to get an idea. And here you can see the other aspects of the 8R. It's mostly the same. It's got the same number of heat sinks, same move, same armor allocations, etc., etc. So very similar other than in the weapons. Now this is where the changes really kick in. First of all, you get rid of your PPCs and you stick to exchange them with the large laser and some LRMs. Um, this makes a major change because you now can explode from overheat. Okay, so now let's try the 8T. This one um, basically adds a second large laser, but at the cost of some heat sinks because the previous variant was a little bit overheat sunk so it can afford it. So as you can see, this time only 23 heat sinks. And pretty much everything else is very similar. The armor is similar, speed is the same. Basically just drop some heat sinks to get that extra large laser. Now the Sarna doesn't uh, list the spec sheets and I don't have the spec sheet for this variant so I had to just kind of make up locations for the sinks. They might be wrong, but again, you must remember that the number for weight is not the same as the number for crit. And there you go. Now we have two large lasers, one left arm, one on the right arm. Um, this does change the mech again significantly, but now you're at much greater risk of overheating, though not still not much. Now we're going to finally do the 8V. This one is basically a hybrid between the 8Q and the 8R. The 8R is a big change with the stripping out PPCs and adding large lasers and LRMs. So this one is kind of not quite as big of a change from the original design. So again, the heat sinks and the armor allocations are pretty much the same. The speed is the same. Most of its basic characteristics are the same. Again, the main difference, just weapons. Again, just be careful about the difference between the crit slot and weight on heat sinks. And then here's the loadout for the last variant. You still keep one of your PPCs, but you get rid of one of your LRMs. Um, to get the masses balanced out, I had to keep the same two tons of ammo though, so you just get more LRM shots. To figure out what the new cost of the new variant is, the first thing you have to figure out is what is the chassis multiplier? That's basically tons divided by 100 plus 1. So a 80 ton awesome would have a chassis multiplier of 1.8. Then you subtract off the PPCs that you're stripping off. That's 200k each. You see that minus 3 times 1.8 times 200k. Then you add the LRMs. So it's 2 times 175k times 1.8. Then we're going to add some ammo. Uh, 2 times 30k times 1.8. Then we're going to add the large laser. Now let's try to repeat this process for the 8T. So we start with the 8Q price, 6598170. And you subtract off the PPCs, add two LRMs, add two tons of ammo, 30k a piece and then add two large lasers. Now we run into a problem with the heat sinks because various references just say that heat sinks are inexpensive, um, but I, I'm having trouble finding the uh, current price. So I'm just gonna call them free. So currently the heat sinks are free, but we, that may be wrong. And finally, we'll do the 8V. Now, the good part is this goes back to the standard 828 heat sinks. So you don't have to do weird guesses on prices. So 6598170, this time only subtract two PPCs, so then times the chassis factor 1.8. Then you add one LRM, so that's 175K. Then you add two tons of ammo, and you add one large laser. So this time, 
you get this other new price. And this time you don't have to uh, make up a price for heat sinks. And that's it. Okay, enough of that. Now, let's see how these do in actual battle. Let's see if uh, one of these variants is standing out as better than the others. The win percentage of the 8Q looks pretty damn good at 66%, whereas the 8R, T, and V are 56, 57, and 63. Not bad either. These are pretty high win percentages compared to other mechs near them in the mech list, which is generally in order of tonnage. If you look at in terms of battle value, the V is slightly better than the Q as far as wins per battle value, but they're both pretty close and uh, the T is by far the worst. Then you look at the wins per ton and the Q edges out the V, but they're not that far apart. And in wins per cost, the Q is the best, but they're again, not too far apart between the Q and the V. Not sure why that is, but it could be that the, uh, the ones with the, the LRMs just don't do as well as the PPCs. Maybe the further out minimum distance causes problems with it in close range, but who knows. Have it for the awesome. Now, one last thing about armor distribution. Um, I've kind of cooked up a cheesy artificial intelligence method for distributing armor, and depending on whether you're a DPS or a brawler, and obviously the awesome is a brawler. The armor distribution algorithm for a brawler is basically if your total points of armor is greater than um, greater than 87, you put 9 in the head. If it's greater than 79, you put 8, 71, 7, down onward until if it's like greater than 31, you only put 5 in the head. Um, and you kind of scale in between. Then you take your remaining points of armor and you divide by 7 and you assign that initially to the center torso. That's not all the center torso you'll have, but that's the initial allocation. Now, you then take 0.4, multiply that by how much center torso front you have, and you put that as your rear. Again, that's not gonna be all your center torso armor, but that's what you start with. Now, find your remaining armor, and you're now going to take your center torso front and multiply it by 0.75. Um, and that will be your side fraction. And then what you do is you then multiply again by 0.4 to find the rear side. So uh, right torso and left torso rear would get that as an initial allocation. Now you take your remaining armor, um, whatever you haven't put in your center torso or left or right torso or the rear torsos and you now divide by five and that's your right arm armor initial and left arm armor then you take your remaining armor and you divide by two and you set up your leg armor to be maxed out depending on whatever your maximum al allowed is for your legs. You will have some missing armor or some unallocated armor on many mechs. So for this unallocated armor, you go back to the left and right front torsos and you first add half your total remaining armor and put it on your left and right front torsos after you've maxed those out, you put the rest into your center torso. After that has been maxed out, you go to your left and right arms. If you follow this algorithm, you almost exactly construct the armor diagram of the awesome. So my guess is that if you follow this algorithm, you can kind of make an awesome like armor distribution for any amount of armor on any mech.